Okay, um, thank you for the introduction, and I'd also like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to share with you our work on a bile acid transporter, NTCP, and its role in HCV infection. Um, okay, but I'm actually going to start the story with a different virus, hepatitis B virus, and the discovery of this bile acid transporter, the sodium torocolate co-transporting polypeptide, which I'll call NTCP, um, as the first receptor for HPV. And it's been shown that ligands of NTCP, such as bile acids themselves, inhibit HPV binding and infection. Furthermore, a peptide that's derived from the envelope protein of HPV, called the pre-S1 peptide, has been shown to inhibit bile acid transport and inhibit HPV infection. And this peptide is actually in clinical trials for HPV and HDV. Um, it's also been shown that bile acids enhance HCV infection, although the mechanisms have been unclear. And we wondered if the bile acid transporter NTCP has any role in HCV infection. The answer was yes, and I presented some of the preliminary data at the CANHEP C meeting last year, where we showed that NTCP does in fact modulate HCV infection. And since then, we've gone on to identify and characterize the mechanisms that are involved. So to do so, we generated an NTCP expressing hepatoma cell line using H2H 7.5.1 cells. Normally, these cells are deficient for NTCP expression, but we were able to exogenously um, introduce NTCP into these cells. And we can see on both the RNA level and the protein level that we do have expression of NTCP in these cells. So we compared HCV infection in the parental cell line compared to the NTCP expressing cell line using both HCV CC, which is the full life cycle virus, and HCV pseudoparticles, which recapitulate the entry steps of HCV only. So we can see that um, expression, oops, I have to go back. Sorry about that. The expression of NTCP enhances HCV CC infection by about 2.5 fold. And similarly, in, um, expression of NTCP enhances HCV PP entry by about 1.5 to twofold. However, we did not see an effect for VSV or MLV pseudoparticles, suggesting that this is um, specific for HCV. We then looked if the bile acid transport activity of NTCP was important for HCV infection, and we did so by using the pre-S1 peptide, which binds to NTCP and blocks bile acid uptake. We used um, HDV, which recapitulates the entry steps of HBV and is a surrogate model for HBV entry as a control here. And we can see that a one-hour pretreatment of NTCP um, with pre-S1 completely reduces HDV infection, which is normal in what we expected with a one-hour pretreatment. However, one-hour pretreatment um, had no effect on HCVPP or VSV entry into these cells. But we did notice that the longer the pre-S1 was on the cells before infection, the greater the effect we had on viral infection. So by 72 hours, if we treat the cells for 72 hours before infection, we can reduce the entry by about um, 70%. And this was also observed for HCV CC, so it's um, true for the full life cycle virus as well. So we thought then that NTCP has different mechanisms for HBV and HCV. For HBV, it's a direct binding mechanism. It um, is involved in binding. However, for HCV, it seems like it's an indirect, um, perhaps, modulation of cellular physiology, which then um, contributes to HCV infection. We tested this hypothesis by doing genome-wide microarray studies. So the cells were treated with the pre-S1 peptide for 48 hours, and then we extracted the RNA and did genome-wide microarray analysis. We performed gene set enrichment analysis to see which pathways were induced or suppressed by uh, pre-S1 treatment. Um, some of the results were not too surprising. For example, fatty acid and bile acid metabolism were induced by pre-S1. But it was surprising that the interferon alpha response was also induced by pre-S1 treatment. And we looked at this on an individual gene level, and we saw that a number of ISGs, the expression of a number of ISGs, were actually induced by the pre-S1 treatment including two which kind of jumped off the page at us, IFID-M2 and IFID-M3. So these were recently described as restriction factors for HCV entry. So we selected IFID-M3 as a sort of a sample, a representative ISG for some further validation studies. We uh, first looked at IFID-M3 expression, um, basically um, and how it correlates with expression of NTCP and modulation of NTCP uh, bile acid transport activity. 
So on the leftmost bar, we have the parental cell line without NTCP. We can see that if we add NTCP, we reduce the expression of IFIDM3 by about 50%. And this is on the mRNA level, but we also saw it for the protein as well. However, if we add pre-S1 to these cells to block bile acid uptake, we restore the expression of IFIDM3 to the parental cell line in the absence of NTCP. And if we add bile acid, we further suppress IFIDM3 expression um, even further. And this correlates with the effect we see on HCV infection. By adding bile acid, we see a dose-dependent increase in HCV infection in the NTCP-expressing cells, which we did not see for the parental cell line without NTCP. Furthermore, in the presence of bile acid, if we silence IFIDM3 using siRNA, we see that there is a further enhancement of HCV infection. We did not see this in the absence of bile acid, and we think that's because um, other ISGs can compensate for I, uh, IFIDM3 being deficient. Um, however, with bile acid, the ISG expression is expressed or suppressed, sorry, so then we see the effect with silencing IFIDM3. So these studies were in H2H7 derived cells, which we know aren't the best for looking at innate immunity. So we went on to validate our findings using primary human hepatocytes. We first um, looked at whether bile acid suppresses ISG expression in primary human hepatocytes as well, also using a microarray analysis. And we can see that yes, um, the answer is yes that they do. So here in three um, different samples, we see that treatment with PHH with bile acid suppresses the expression of ISGs, including IFIDM3 um, and the other IFIDMs as well. And interestingly, if we add bile acid back in, or sorry, if we add pre-S1 to this, which blocks the bile acid uptake, we can essentially restore the expression of these ISGs to the control setting prior to the addition of bile acid. Um, and we further confirmed that this was functionally relevant for HCV. Um, by silencing NTCP in the PHH, we saw a reduction in HCV entry. And we also saw that bile acid increased entry of uh, HCV into PHH, and that this could be um, reduced by adding the pre-S1 to block bile acid transport. Finally, we confirmed that this was dependent on interferon responses because we no longer saw an effect of the pre-S1 peptide in the presence of an antibody blocking the type 1 interferon receptor. So in conclusion, our model is that bile acid transport through NTCP normally suppresses innate antiviral responses by blocking the interferon alpha pathway. And this leads to a reduction in the expression of ISGs, therefore enhancing viral infection. But if we add pre-S1, we block bile acid transport which alleviates this bile acid-mediated suppression of innate antiviral responses. So then we increase ISG expression to restrict viral infection. So in conclusion, NTCP-mediated bile acid uptake suppresses the expression of ISGs, therefore enhancing HCV infection. And if we inhibit bile acid uptake, we restore the innate antiviral response to inhibit viral infection. NTCP is a novel player linking bile acid metabolism to the innate antiviral response in hepatocytes, and therefore it plays a role in the infection process of multiple hepatotropic viruses via distinct mechanisms. So we think NTCP is an attractive antiviral target, especially for HBV-HCV co-infection, and especially considering that the pre-S1 peptide is already in clinical trials, phase two trials for HBV. So we think it could be sort of a two-pronged approach. You can block HPV entry while at the same time boosting the innate immune responses to also counteract the virus that way. So I'll conclude by thanking um, everybody who contributed to this work, especially my co-first author on this paper, Elwell Verrier, and Miriam Zeisel and Thomas Baumert for supervising our study. I'd also like to thank um, our other collaborators who contributed and the funding sources, especially Ken Hep C for a training fellowship. Thank you. Well, I have time for one or two quick questions. Danielle? Uh, Danielle Amar. Uh, I would like to know if you ever test uh, protease inhibitor, because they're peptidobiotics and they're actively transport. And indeed, uh, compounds like BILM 2061 was a major competitor of bile acid when we were testing it. Okay, we didn't actually look at so protease would, inhibitors. It could be interesting to right. see if that can modulate yeah. and have an impact on 
Definitely an interesting point, yeah. And then the second question is, what do you think is the mechanism? Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the million dollar question. Um, <laughs> we, it seems that bile acid can inhibit the phosphorylation of STAT1, STAT2 at this point in the pathway, but there's really no further details known about it. Okay, so you don't have any effect on the early transcriptome, like interferon beta, type 3 interferon? No, okay. not that we noticed. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so